There's no doubt that Thunderbolt has greater bandwidth than USB. And higher bandwidth means lower latency and better performance, right? Well, actually, the answer may surprise you. So stick around, because in this video, I'm sharing three reasons why I'm personally choosing to stick with a USB audio interface. By the way, this video is sponsored by RME. A few months ago, I approached RME because I had heard that they were building USB 2.0 audio interfaces that stood up to even the fastest USB 3.0 and Thunderbolt interfaces. After talking with them for a bit, they agreed to send me this RME Fireface UCX2, which is a USB 2.0 audio interface, so that I could try it out for myself and make this video for you. Let's start with a brief overview of the various generations of USB and Thunderbolt. USB connections can be made using many different connectors, but audio interface connections will generally be made through either USB-A, USB-B, or USB-C connectors. Thunderbolt connections can also be made with a USB-C type connector, but some Thunderbolt interfaces utilize a mini display port type connector. The various generations of USB and Thunderbolt can facilitate different levels of bandwidth. With greater bandwidth, more information can be transmitted within a given amount of time. USB 2.0 provides 480 megabits per second. USB 3.0 provides 5 gigabits per second. USB 3.1 provides 10 gigabits per second. And USB 4 provides 20 gigabits per second. While Thunderbolt 1 provides 10 gigabits per second, Thunderbolt 2 provides 20 gigabits per second, and Thunderbolt 3 provides 40 gigabits per second. Thunderbolt 3 and 4 both provide the same bandwidth, but Thunderbolt 4 adds some additional capabilities. Transmitting audio data streams alone requires a relatively small amount of bandwidth. To calculate the bandwidth needed to transmit an audio file, you can use this formula. Sample rate times bit depth times number of channels. This means to transmit a 24-bit, 44.1 kilohertz stereo file, you'll theoretically need about two megabits per second of bandwidth. Even if you up the sample rate to 192 kilohertz, you'll still only need about nine megabits per second of bandwidth. This would theoretically equate to about 240 stereo channels at 44.1 kilohertz, or 53 stereo channels at 192 kilohertz over a USB 2.0 connection. Remember, USB 2.0 is rated for 480 megabits per second. The reason I'm emphasizing the word theoretically is because along with the audio data itself, control data and other information needs to be transmitted. But even after factoring in this extra data, the number of channels possible with USB 2.0 far exceeds the physical I.O. of many audio interfaces. 2x2 audio interfaces, like the popular Focusrite Scarlett 2i2, only require about 4 megabits per second for 24-bit 48 kilohertz audio data to and from each of the two inputs and two outputs. So USB 2.0 is more than enough, even when adding the additional non-audio data. But the RME Fireface UCX2, which is a 40-channel audio interface, only requires 46 megabits per second at its maximum capacity, assuming a 48 kilohertz sample rate and a 24-bit depth. The actual channel count that's achievable through a USB or Thunderbolt connection varies greatly depending on the efficiency of the USB or Thunderbolt driver that's being used. RME is known for creating custom drivers with world-class performance, offering up to 140 channels over a USB 2.0 connection. On the larger RME interface, the UFX Plus, they designed it with USB 3.0 and Thunderbolt to facilitate the higher 188-channel I.O. count. My work fits well within the limitations of USB 2.0, especially using the RME drivers, and that's the first reason I'm sticking with USB. Any digital audio system will add some level of latency or delay caused by signal transfers and processing. Round-trip latency is the amount of time it takes the signal from your microphone or instrument to go through into your interface, through your computer and DAW, and out of your interface through your headphones or speakers. There's a common misconception surrounding USB, Thunderbolt, and latency. That is that many believe more bandwidth means faster data travel speed, when in reality, the data travels at the same speed, you can just fit more channels within a greater bandwidth connection, as we discussed in the previous section. 
The classic analogy is to compare two highways with the same speed limit. Although one highway has more lanes than the other, the cars will travel at the same speed. Adding more lanes means more cars can travel within the same period of time, but each individual car still travels the same speed limit. For channel counts within the limitations of the given connection, whether USB 2.0, 3.0, or Thunderbolt, the latency you'll experience is determined by more factors than just the connection type being used. The processing speed of your computer will play a large role, and the drivers being used will play an equal or greater role. Most audio interface drivers these days offer an acceptable level of latency for recording and monitoring through a DAW, but some are much more efficient than others. The problems with latency arise when attempting to process the signal while monitoring in real time. For example, you may want to listen to not only your vocal microphone while singing, but also some reverb. There are a few ways to do this. The first would be to load a reverb plugin in your DAW and route the audio into your DAW through the reverb plugin and out of the DAW through your headphones. This is where the CPU speed and drivers play a significant role, because the lower the round trip latency can be, the more processing can be used before reaching an unacceptable level of latency. Again, RME's drivers are incredibly fast in this regard. The second method that you'll find in some audio interfaces is the ability to process the audio within the interface itself using a built-in processor. In these cases, input signals will be split into two paths, one to be recorded by the DAW and the other to be processed within the interface DSP for monitoring plugins with nearly zero latency. RME offers functionality similar to this that allows you to monitor through EQs, compressors, and effects separate from the DAW plugins, which keeps latency to a minimum while still providing a comfortable monitoring experience for the performer. The main takeaway here, as it relates to this discussion, is that the connection type doesn't affect latency as much as the processing speed of your computer, the monitoring method, and the efficiency of the audio driver being used. The speed of this RME interface, paired with either my slick audio PC or my M1 Pro MacBook Pro, has been more than capable of everything I've needed to do. And that's the second reason I've decided to stick with USB. USB is an open standard that's been around for a very long time, while Thunderbolt is a proprietary standard, which inherently implies an additional cost to implement Thunderbolt. Both USB and Thunderbolt have reached a level of maturity that makes me confident that they'll both be around for the foreseeable future, but USB is still currently more widely supported. New Macs and MacBooks support Thunderbolt across the board, but it's not as common on Windows computers. USB 2.0, on the other hand, is supported by pretty much any Mac or Windows computer on the market these days, and USB 3.0 is also very common. In my experience, USB is also more reliable. For example, setting up my Thunderbolt interface on my MacBook was very simple, but to this day, I still experience issues when using it with my PC, especially for programs outside of the DAW, like video conferencing and streaming. The good thing about USB is that it's very reliable for both Mac and Windows. I can connect my ARMY interface to any machine, download the drivers, and it will work perfectly every single time. Not only that, but it can also be set up to work in class compliant mode with no drivers needed. The fact that I can take my interface anywhere and know that it will work is a big reason why I'm choosing to stick with a USB audio interface. If you're shopping for a professional interface, I can strongly recommend the ARMY Babyface Pro FS and the Fireface UCX2. The features and reliability have completely blown me away, and I really want to thank ARMY for sending me these interfaces and making this video possible. You can find links to both of them in the description below. Go ahead and check out the video that's on your screen to learn more. I'll see you there.